Hello, IP5, and welcome to this week's class. Uh, I hope everyone remembered that they had homework from last week, and that homework is all of the questions that you see at the side of the PowerPoints, of the pages, of your books. You need to answer them. So I hope that everybody has that completed from last week. And just as a quick reminder what we're doing, or what we're learning at the moment, we're learning about the digestive system and the excretory system. So the digestive system and excretory system are two different systems within our body. The digestive system is the intake of food and drink, and the excretory system is how we get rid of that from our bodies. So, last week we learned about the digestive system, this week we are going to learn about the excretory system, okay? Um, that word might be a bit difficult to pronounce, so I will give you a chance to practice it. Excretory. Excretory. Okay, repeat after me. Excretory. Excretory. One more time. Excretory. Okay, very good. So, if you can open up on page 5 and follow as I read. The excretory system is a system that removes waste materials from the body. It prevents the accumulation of toxic substances in the body. The excretory system comprises the skin, lungs, and kidneys. Okay, so <clears throat> the excretory system is there to remove to toxic substances from within our body. So basically when we consume food, we consume food because we need nutrients and minerals from that food to help keep our bodies healthy. The problem is there are also uh, chemicals within food that are not good for our body, especially after digestion. So after, like remember, digestion is when we extract all the minerals, all the nutrients, all the good things from food. What's left in our bodies can be bad for us, especially if we do not get rid of it, okay? So that is the job of the excretory system, is to get rid of uh, the the bad remains that are left over after digestion. So, there are three ways that we excrete. Excrete means to get rid of, okay? So that's why, we, that's why it's called the excretory system. Um, so it's the getting rid of system. So there's three ways that we excrete or get rid of those bad uh, substances from within our bodies. They are through the skin, through the lungs and through our kidneys, okay? So we're going to look at all of those three things now, today. So the first one is skin. Our skin is an excretory organ. It is composed of three primary layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and fatty layer. So just practice pronouncing those words. They're a little bit difficult. The first one is epidermis epidermis second one is dermis dermis and the third one then is fatty layer fatty layer okay so let's have a look at this image of our skin so this is what the layer of skin is looks like okay uh, but it's broken up into three different parts. There's three different layers to make one whole part of skin. The top part is the epidermis, okay? The bit that you can see here. This is called the epidermis, okay? So that's up here. Here you can see that there's hair that can come through the epidermis, okay? So you can see hair on your arms. It's attached or the, the part that it's coming through is the epidermis. That is the top layer of skin. Underneath the top layer, underneath the epidermis, you have the dermis. 
Okay, so that is the second layer or middle layer of the skin. And then below that, you have fatty layer. Okay, the fatty layer. So in the dermis, you will find blood capillaries. So they are like blood cells, okay? And then underneath that, you will find sweat glands, okay? Sweat glands. So basically, um, that is what the different layers of your skin comprises of, three different layers. I just want you, before we move on to the next page, I want to remind you of the questions that you need to answer in your copybooks for homework on this page. The first question, very easy, what is the excretory system? Okay, refer to over here, you will find the answer. Second question, what are the three primary layers of the skin? We've just talked about them, very easy to find the answer. And then the third part you need to do is copy the image of the different layers of the skin. Okay, that should be of the skin, not if the skin. So again, you'll just need to copy this image. Okay, very simple uh, homework for that page. Okay, <clears throat> so let's learn more about our skin. Our skin has many sweat glands which produce sweat. The sweat glands absorb water, excess dissolved mineral salts, and urea from the surrounding blood capillaries. These waste materials are then removed from our body through sweat pores in the form of sweat. So everybody, anytime you run, anytime it's very, very hot, you know you sweat. And basically, the reason that we are sweating is because we are getting rid of excess water that's inside our bodies, we need to get rid of it. So uh, our skin, it will come out through our skin. Uh, and as you remember from the last image, in under the second layer of skin, the dermis, we have sweat glands, okay? So those glands will uh, produce or absorb sweat and then ex uh, excrete it through the epidermis, the top layer of our skin. Okay, and then we'll feel the sweat or see the sweat on our skin. Um, keeping our skin healthy. So like every organ in your body, you need to know how to care for it and keep it healthy. The following are some tips on keeping our skin healthy. We should use a mild soap and water to wash our skin. So you will have learned this back in IP1 and 2 and 3 and 4, how important it is to keep our bodies clean, okay? Best way to keep our, clean, our bodies clean is by using soap, okay? Soap with water to keep our bodies uh, clean, uh, looking uh, and smelling, okay? We should drink plenty of water and have a healthy diet. Something that you've learned from the time you're very, very young. It's so important to drink lots of water. This water is not just good for the insides of our body, it's also good for the outside, for our skin. Keeps our skin looking healthy um, and being able to excrete excess water from inside our bodies out. We should seek medical advice when we have skin problems. So some people will have skin problems. And if you do, it's important that you go to a pharmacy or to a hospital to talk to a doctor or a professional about how to uh, look after your skin so that those skin problems don't become worse as you get older, okay? So if you, have, if you notice any skin issues like rashes uh, on your body, you should go show, talk to your parents first and then go to seek medical advice. Okay, that's our skin. Now we're going to move on to our lungs. Our lungs remove the unwanted carbon dioxide and excess water from our body. 
The lungs are a pair of spongy organs situated in the chest on either side of the heart. They are protected by the ribcage. So you should remember this. I think you, in IP2, you learn about the internal organs and you will have learned about the lungs and the process of the lungs, what they do. So the lungs take in oxygen and they excrete, they get rid of the carbon dioxide. So when we breathe in oxygen, it goes all through our body. And when we are finished with it, we exhale, we exhale carbon dioxide. And that is not good for us. So we don't, we can't keep carbon dioxide inside of our body. So we need to get rid of it. And then we do that through our lungs by exhaling. And your lungs, just in case you're not sure where they are, they're here. These, they're about here. And your heart is here. So there's lungs either side of your heart. Okay, let's have a look at, uh, at the image here for your lungs. So, uh, we breathe in through the nasal cavity, that's in through your nose. That air that we breathe in goes down through your trachea, which is in your throat, and then into our lungs, okay? So you can see an image here, we have two lungs, one left lung, one right lung, and they are protected by your rib cage. So if you go like this, you can feel your rib cage here. They are there to protect your lungs and your heart, okay? Uh, then there's different parts of the lungs. We're going to look at these now. So it's good to go through this so that you understand or that you're aware of the words. It doesn't matter if you can't remember exactly where they are at the moment, but it, this is just so that you're aware of the different words. So you have here a thing called a bronchus, okay, a bronchus. And inside the bronchus, you have the bronchiole. That's this word here. And the alveolus, this word here. So we can see bronchiole, or like, um, like a tube, I guess, is a good way to, to visualize it. It's like a tube, and within the bronchiole, you have these uh, circles uh, that are like bubbles that are attached to each other, and they're called alveolus. Uh, that's the blue one here. And then underneath the alveolus, you have blood capillaries. So this is the red one. So think of the alveolus without blood and the blood capillaries full of blood, okay? So let's read more about them. Okay, from the top of page seven. Our lungs are made up of alveoli, okay? Alveoli. Bronchioles and blood capillaries, okay? So these are all made up of more than one. There's not just one, there's lots of them. So alveoli is lots of alveolus. Bronchioles is lots of bronchioles. And blood capillaries are more than one blood capillary, okay? So they're made up of lots of these. When we inhale, Air flows from the surroundings into our nasal cavity, then into the trachea, bronchus, bronchioles, and finally into the alveoli. So, when we inhale, breathe in. So inhale is when we breathe in. Oxygen has to travel into our lungs, and it takes a certain route. So you will always breathe in through your nose, then it'll go down through your trachea, then through into your uh, bronchioles, and finally, the last part is the alveoli. The oxygen in the air in the alveoli enters the blood in the capillaries. At the same time, carbon dioxide and water move from the blood in the capillaries into the air in the alveolus. Okay, so uh, basically to what you can try and remember is that the capillaries are full of blood and the alveolus are full of air, okay? And carbon dioxide, uh, after we've breathed in, 
after it's gone through the nasal, the trachea, the bronchus, into the bronchioli, into the alveoli, uh, alveolus, um, it then gets turned into carbon dioxide and needs to get out. So it will relieve the exact same way, okay? So instead of the way, going, way it comes in, it has to go back out the same way, okay? But the opposite. Okay, so instead of going in, it goes out. Carbon dioxide and water in the form of water vapor are removed from the body as exhaled air from the lungs during exhal exhalation. Exhale, okay? Exhale means to breathe out, and that is how we remove carbon dioxide from our system. Okay, keeping our lungs healthy. We should not smoke because cigarette smoke damages our lungs and keeps it difficult and makes it difficult for us to breathe. Avoid being a secondhand smoker too. Okay, so smoking is very, very bad. You've learned about this in health classes from me before. So, uh, when we smoke, we damage our lungs. So it's very important that you should not smoke. If somebody is smoking beside you, it's important that you don't inhale the smoke from their cigarettes because that can also damage your lungs. When we work with chemicals, we should wear protective masks to prevent chemical fumes from entering our lungs. So uh, there are lots of different chemicals that are out there that will damage our lungs. So it's important to know that when you're around certain chemicals, you should always wear a mask to stop those chemicals from breathing in those chemicals. And finally, regular exercise helps our lungs to function properly. Okay, you've learned this from the time you're very young. Exercise is the best thing for us to keep our body healthy. Just like your heart, just like your lungs, uh, just like your brain, exercise always works for us. Okay? Okay, so that is all we are going to do for this week's class. Uh, I will just read out the questions before we finish. What do we inhale and how does it get to our lungs? Okay, so I've just spoke about that. And what do we exhale and how does it leave our body? So I've just talked about that as well. And what are three ways to keep our lungs healthy? So that was the last thing that I discussed with you. So please make sure in your copy books you write down the questions and answer them. Okay, that's all for this week. Thank you so much, IP5. See you again next week.